Hello, everyone. How are we? Welcome to class. Today in Lesson 7, we'll be covering Chapter 9. Um, this is the uh, gender dysphoria and sexual dysfunction and paraphilic disorders. Uh, most students find this uh, chapter very uh, interesting, um, and uh, we can all learn a lot. Let's, uh, let's start our PowerPoint here. So we're going to start out by a little view of the sexual response cycle for men and women, some little bit of differences between the psychological and biological components of sexual behaviors, a little bit of uh, functional impairment uh, and the, of the sexual dysfunctions, and we'll be discussing a little bit of the age, race, and ethnicity effect and prevalence of sexual dysfunctions. We can't talk about sexual uh, functioning um, and psychology without talking about Kenzie, Masters and Johnson, and Kaplan. These three, um, well actually four people with Masters and Johnson being two um, uh, researchers working together um, have done a, a wonderful job of trying to help us understand um, our sexual functioning and dysfunctioning um, and the psychological components thereof. There are a lot of um, uh, things to consider when we're talking about sexual disorders in, in the psychological realm. Uh, we have differences in desire, uh, differences in capacity, um, the way that sex is defined um, is often changing um, nowadays for the last, uh, uh, 50 years or so, um, uh, we've uh, been redefining uh, what sex is, uh, what our genders are, um, and the sexual response is often very subjective or different between one person and the other. Um, most uh, adults uh, of all ages uh, are somewhat sexually active. Um, they have, uh, most people feel that uh, a satisfactory sexual relationship is important for having healthy relationships in a, in a committed um, uh, relationship, a marriage, a partnership, um, uh, as we're talking about that. Of course, we need to think about the cultural aspects of, uh, of of sex, what is okay, what is not okay, um, what is permitted. Um, oftentimes there's cultural and religious uh, aspects to that that is overlaid upon the individuals in, in the, whatever culture we grew up in or whatever families we grew up in. <clears throat> So this uh, gender identity and, and gender dysphoria is a very difficult subject to uh, lecture on because this area is constantly and continually um, evolving um, as we speak. And so um, I'll let you do your own research um, in this. Um, it is becoming um, somewhat of a hard um, subject to even start to talk about because things are changing so rapidly as far as how we understand um, ourselves in, uh, in our own uh, gender. So let's talk a little bit about the sexual dysfunctions. Um, sexual dysfunctions are basically anything that can go wrong um, with our uh, sex, sexual organs um, and can cause either in uh, 
uh, self uh, manipulation, either masturbation or in sexual relationships between two people. Um, the dysfunctions also have to do with the response and the desire, um, but often has to do with the actual functioning of the physical structures of the male and female uh, genitalia. The desire disorders or the sexual interest disorders, um, the hypoactive or basically the, their uh, hypo meaning less active sexual desire uh, happens in male and female uh, where they're significantly reduced or absent sexual interest or arousal. Um, and this can be seen at times um, as a uh, as a problem for the individual and in, in relationships um, and can bring people to therapy. Probably the most common um, uh, sexual dysfunction uh, that we hear a lot about uh, probably on TV and through uh, a lot of uh, pharmaceutical ad advertising is the erectile dis disorder or dysfunction. Uh, where the male is not able to obtain or maintain an erection for uh, uh, long enough to complete the sex acts with, uh, with their partner. So again, anything that can go wrong will go wrong, uh, or we have the orgasmic disorders, the delayed ejaculation disorders, the female orgasmic disorders. Uh, where we have both male and female have difficulty experiencing orgasm. Um, uh, we also have premature ejaculation for the male where um, within a minute after um, penetration, the, uh, the male ejaculates. Vaginismus is basically uh, unwanted or involuntary spasms of the vaginal wall muscles, um, which causes pain for the woman and difficulty for penetration during the sex act between a woman and a man. Here we see some of the ages of when some of the disorders can occur. Again, feel free to pause this if you want to take a look at these slides uh, for a longer period of time. So a lot of our sexual disorders are brought on by hormonal imbalances, either estrogen or testosterone um, and some others, but those are the mainly the two sex hormones that we talk about. Um, we can have, uh, uh, a lot of sexual dysfunction by the overuse or the abuse of alcohol or drugs. Um, there's a lot of psychological factors that goes into sexual dysfunction when uh, there's a lot of anxiety revolving sexual performance. Um, oftentimes, uh, our, uh, we, our, we will have a dysfunction in our, uh, in our performance. <clears throat> As far as treatment, oftentimes we can replace the sex hormones. Uh, testosterone uh, will help uh, both male and female with increased desire. Um, some drugs, as SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors are used, um, and uh, things like Viagra are used to help uh, men uh, and uh, um, Cialis uh, for men and women uh, for erectile dysfunction. We have sex, sex therapy as a treatment um, where the counseling revolves around um, helping um, the couple or the individual uh, achieve their goals for sexual activity. Uh, sensate focus and non-demand pleasuring is often a starting place where couples are instructed over a period of weeks to um, slowly just start touching, talking, um, no uh, demands or strings attached as far as having sex together, but just getting to know each other's bodies um, in a way and touching in a way, but no um, uh, demand for uh, any sexual acts. Paraphilic disorders um, 
there's a lot in our book and there's a lot that you can um, write about. It's a lot of students who will write about this in the discussion board. Um, and this is where there's an intense or persistent sexual interest in things that are um, uh, not necessarily um, um, seen as uh, desirable uh, objects of our sexual um, interests. Um, these uh, can be uh, uh, anything that's kind of acquired uh, during uh, maybe early childhood that are associated with sexual feelings. Um, and um, um, can, can be a, a kind of a, a, a problem for a lot of people as we go along. Some of the paraphilic disorders uh, are like fetishes, uh, which I was talking about in the last uh, slide, uh, having certain things that uh, cause desire and arousal uh, in, in, in them, in, in the person. Pedophilic disorder is basically an intense recurrent sexual urges to be aroused by fantasies involving children um, uh, as a sexual uh, object. Exhibitionism is basically intense or recurrent sexual arousal involving exposing one's genitals to an unsuspecting person. And we come to the end. I'm sorry that was so quick on this one, but there's a lot there in the chapter. Please, please, please uh, read more about it. Um, and um, uh, I will see you uh, in the discussion boards. Um, glad you're sticking with us. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.